Good morning, beautiful friends, and Merry Christmas if you're celebrating today. Thank you for coming with me and sewing on this beautiful Christmas day. Um, so, I did my quick Christmas presents yesterday or the day before, and they're all ready for us to celebrate. But I forgot that I had asked, I had told my sister I would help make the twins Christmas, simple Christmas dress. Um, my little niece is going to be wearing a buffalo plaid close to this color. And so I said, I have some fabric, I can whip something up. Then I remembered. Ellie and Mac doesn't really have a very a quick sew for um, the size that I'm looking for. I wanted a quick top with a gathered skirt and we don't really have that. So I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and hack a, a, an awesome pattern I already love and turn it into the dress that I am thinking of in my mind. So that's what we're doing today. Come along and let's do it together. <laughs> Alright, so I've got this gorgeous fabric. This is a sweater knit um, and it is super soft and cozy and cute. And so we're going to use that for it. Um, and then I am using the kids, the baby sleeping sack gown because these twins are a size three to six. Um, and we don't really have uh, like the type of dress that I'm looking for in a three to six size, but we do have this gown. And this gown has a really nice top um, and you could actually use, if you wanted to use the placket version and then sew the placket together at the bottom and attach the skirt like I'm going to do, but I don't have time. It's Christmas day. I don't have time to um, do the placket. So we're just going simple. We're going the simple version and then we're attaching a gathered skirt to it. So I'm gonna show you just exactly how I'm going to cut my fabric and then I'm gonna cut my fabric and get going. So um, I have my, uh, my pattern piece. So this is my pattern piece. Now you know that the baby gown goes way longer than the baby because it's a sack gown is really what it is. You could measure out how tall, how long you want the dress and then just trim the bottom of the dress and hem and that would be a nice little A-line dress for a baby. So you could do that. But I did really want that gathered effect because what my nie little niece is wearing is got like a bib and then he has the gathered skirt at the bottom. So I kind of wanted them to be very similar. So what I did is I, first of all, asked my sister to measure from the armpit down how long we would want the bodice to be. So she did and I marked it on my pattern right here. But now remember that you want to have an extra little bit for seam allowance where they're both going to meet the dress and the skirt. So don't forget to add that. So I went ahead and cut that and this is gonna be my bodice, my bodice piece. And I'm gonna do that to the front and the back. Now for the bottom of the skirt, what we did was we measured out how much from the waist to how long she wanted it to be. And I can't remember how much it was. I marked my pattern, but I don't remember. So we're gonna measure. Um, this is a wiggly ruler. So we start at the waist where we, where we talked about, and then we go down to the line we talked about, and it was eight inches. But again, I want to add seam allowance. I want to add allowance for the hem, which is half an inch, and I wanna add a quarter inch for the waist where it's going to attach. So I'm just gonna add an extra inch just for good measure. So that's going to be nine inches. So nine, my skirt is gonna be cut nine, and I'm gonna write it down, because if I don't write it down, I'll forget. You all know how I am. So nine inches, that's the length. Um, and then the width, um, we're going to measure our waist. So I'm measuring the waist of my uh, gown, which is five and a half. So five and a half times two, that's 11. So we're gonna cut out two pieces of skirt at nine, I mean 11 width by nine length is what I'm doing. Now it all changes with what size you're gonna make for your little one. Again, this is gonna be like a three to six months um, dress. So if, you, if you're going bigger or whatever, you might wanna measure your child or just kind of eyeball it or think about it or go buy another gown that's another dress that it's the same with a length or whatever that you want or you know sometimes when I'm doing this I'll have to do like a trial and error thing I'll sew one up and if it doesn't work then I'm gonna have to sew another one up the good thing is it's so little it doesn't it uses minimal amount of fabric so the reason why we're cutting two 11 and a half by 11 by 9 
pieces is because we want to double it. Now, this piece right here is cut on the fold. So since we measure the waist here on the fold, that's 11 is what the whole piece is going to be. So we want to double that um, because we want the, the width of the skirt to be double the width of the bodice. Now you could do a double or you could do it 1.5. And honestly, because this is a um, very light sweater knit, I'm just gonna go double and then you have a little bit of fullness. But if it's something that's really, really full and you want to have less ruffles, you can go 1.5. So uh, we're going to do, we're just gonna go double, right? Is that gonna be too much poofiness? I don't know, we're gonna see what it ends up being like. We're gonna go double. So double, that's really 22. So we're gonna cut two pieces of 22 by nine, and that will be our front and our back. And you can cut it on the fold, so it will be 11 um, on the fold. You just have to cut two of those. So let's go ahead and get started cutting. Now I've got twins to sew for, so I'm gonna be cutting double the amount of things. Um, the bodice, I cut it, but the sleeves are going to be the same, the neckband's going to be the same, everything else is going to be the same as the baby sleep sack gown. Alright, so let's cut. All right, on that second skirt, I just went for it and cut the 22 by nine, um, just in the length, so that I only have one side to sew. I mean, it doesn't really matter, it's up to you, um, but since I was already, the fabric was already laid out, I'm just like, I'm just gonna do it all at once. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and build our bodice first, and we'll start by sewing those shoulder seams. Remember, I'm doing two of them, so that's why I'm doing double the work. Um, and we're just gonna sew the shoulder seams on first. Right sides together. Next, we'll add our sleeves by opening up that arm side, grabbing our sleeve. Make sure you mark your top so you know exactly where that is, and we're gonna place it at that shoulder seam, right sides together, and go down one side and then the other, easing it in, right sides together. All right, we're gonna go ahead and prep our bands. Where did I put them? Right here. And what I wanna do is I want to fold my band wrong sides together and create a memory crease first. And sometimes I'm just like, oh, let's just skip this step. It's such an unnecessary step, but it really does help when you go to put on that band to have that memory crease because when you're going to put it the band, you're gonna put it on folded. And if you don't, don't, it's easier to work with if it's already folded. But if you have a band that you have to hold folded as you're trying to sew, it, it's not as easy. Just trust me, I've done it both ways and it is much easier to do it with a memory crease. So don't skip this step. Once you have that memory crease, we're gonna open them back up and sew them right sides together at the raw edge. My goodness, my hands are so dry because of this cold weather. I don't know, let me know below if your hands get really dry like that. And the fabric just keeps sticking to my fingers, like grabbing on, because this is a nice sweater knit that's got lots of fibers. Yes. All right, we're gonna grab our bodice and we're going to fold it right sides together and sew those sides. Sew the sides up. All right, while I'm sewing the sides of my dress, I'm also going to grab my skirts and sew them together. Now, if you if you made two pieces, then you're gonna obviously sew the two sides, right sides together. If you just made one piece, then we're just gonna sew that one side, right sides together. I'm gonna grab this one. This is my one piece, the one that's gonna sew two sides. I'm gonna fold it in half and mark my half piece right now because while I'm over there by my machines, I'm going to go ahead and put in a gathering stitch 
at the top because I'm going to gather this the width of my bodice. So I'm gonna put in that, I'm gonna sew the sides and then I'm gonna put in a long basting stitch on my sewing machine, which will be a gathering stitch or however you like to gather your skirts that we do have a video here on our YouTube channel on different techniques, gathering techniques. So this is up to you however you wanna do it. Um, but since it's just one little piece, I'm going to just probably put in that basting stitch together with. This one I'm doing a little bit different. I marked my front and my back because that seam is gonna go right at the back. So then I'm gonna go to the sides to mark my quarters. The other one will have two side seams. So I just needed a front and a back. On this one, I need a front and two sides. We're getting near the end. All right, so we've got neck bands, we've got a bodice, we've got skirts. We can turn this bodice right side out and we're gonna go ahead and place our neck band on. We're gonna quarter our neck bands and then once we quarter, we're going to uh, uh, attach them to our neck right sides together. If you want a really detailed version on how to do neck bands, we do have a video called Bands, Bands, Bands that goes really detailedly on detailedly, really in depth on how to get a perfect neck band. So if you want to check that out. I'm gonna mark the halves of the bodice so that way I know where I'm attaching the skirt to. Makes it easier after you gather. Right, then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my skirt. That's my iron turning off. And we're gonna gather it the width of our, so this is the one that only has one seam on the back. We're gonna gather it the width of our bodice. And you do that by pulling that basting stitch. Now I like to find my where I marked my half. I knew I marked it somewhere. Where did I mark it? Thought I did. Is it right here? Did I just get to it? Did I skip it? Did I not mark it? Where is it? I guess I didn't do a good job marking it because I don't even see it. All right, let me mark that again because I want to have that. I don't even see myself. Oh, you know why? Because I put the basting stitch at the bottom, not the top. That's okay. It doesn't really matter where I put it. I'm just going to mark it, uh, move those marks up. And here's my mark for my quarter. And here's my other mark for my quarter. It really doesn't matter on this one because it's not a uh, uh, directional print. So that's fine. If it was a directional print or if you had pockets or something like that, then, then it would matter, but it doesn't matter on this one. So we're just gonna go, keep going, go with the go-go. Okay, so here's the half point. So I'm gonna gather this one half to that gathering point. And now it's the width of the, of the bodice, you see that? Then I'm gonna go to the other side and gather the other side, the width of the bodice as well. So now that they're both gathered the width of the bodice, then I can go ahead and even out the gathers between them. And now we're gonna match up those quarter points with the points of my shirt that I've made. Once those are matched up, then I can go ahead and really even out my gathers and make them fit my bodice really nicely. And then we'll go sew them. Sometimes if my fabric is very loose, like this fabric, I like to tie it at, at, at the end, tie it together, those, the one that starts and the one that finishes. That way my skirt gathers don't come loose. Um, it's really easy to gather this skirt because it's such soft fabric, but um, it's also that means it's also easy for it to ungather when I'm trying to sew it together. So 
that's why sometimes clipping, uh, tying those ends is the best way to do it. Let's go sew it. Once we sewed both of those things, then we just need to come back and hem at a half an inch seam allowance and we'll be done. I like to sew with my gathers face up so I can see that they're sticking up and they're not gonna be folded in when I'm trying to sew them. We are done, y'all. I can't even. How adorable is this? I can't wait for the twins to try them on. They are super, super adorable, and I'm so glad I was able to use my trusted Ellie and Mac patterns. Um, I hope they fit them. They're they're three to six, but you know, they're. I didn't measure them before I I um, thought the size. So I just, I'm just kind of rushing, but these are super cute. I think they're gonna be adorable on them and I can't wait for, to give it to them so they can wear them for Christmas day. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't so you never miss out any of our tutorials or our hacks. I hope you're having a wonderful day today, um, spending time with family, and always remember that if you wanna sew something but we don't have a pattern, you can always hack Ellie and Matt patterns because they work so well together and create exactly what you wanna create. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time.